Let's just see where we are right now. Nice and light. Okay, I'm gonna stop you right there. Um, it's slow, but slow doesn't necessarily mean that we're drudging through something. <coughs> it still has to have some forward momentum, okay? So, really light, don't sing it on words, just sing it on uh, do. Is that your best do about? So I could take these notes and I can put them in the computer over there, and it will play pretty close to what you just got. It'll do some sort of synthesized ooh vowel, and it will do it exactly rhythmically correct. But we need to get a little bit more to that, okay? Um, Maurice Durfleet, right? We've talked a little bit about him. Um, what do you know about this piece, it's too, Jesse? It's about his wife. He wrote it for his wife that was dying. He wrote it to his wife. Now he's dying. He was. He was dying. He was dying. It's the, the last piece he okay. ever wrote, and this was like written to his wife. And he says at the top of the page, I'm a femme, to my woman. It's, it's, it's meditative. It's beautiful. And it doesn't necessarily have to be exactly beat, 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 beat. Respond. Respond to me. Still on do. Still on do. We don't need words to make meaning. The music itself does it. Good. Don't look down at all. Look at me. You don't have to raise your hand, don't respond out loud. But how many of you have lost a loved one? I imagine that at this point in your life, at some point, maybe a, a great aunt, gr grandparent, someone in your life, you, you've experienced loss of some kind. And there's no, there's, it, whether you are religious or not, you have, you know, this is said as a prayer, it's meditative. This was written to help ease that pain. Let yourself be a little bit vulnerable. Sing this song to someone that, that you know, or that someone that you knew, or imagine that someone that you knew is singing it to you from wherever they may be. Make it really personal and see what that does to the music. Back to words. <clears throat> It's already more gentle at the beginning, and I love it. I absolutely love it. But if we're going to make this really personal, we also have to make it really respectful, which means we have to do it as perfectly as we possibly can. Because if you're going to dedicate this to somebody, and it doesn't sound very good, then they don't want to hear it. They're going to be like, you dedicated that to me? Oh, thank you. Um, that first sound, in, what is it? It's a voice consonant. Voice consonant, so we have to sing it on the correct pitch, so we don't get a at the beginning. Good. Uh, we've talked a little bit about this symbol right here. What sound does that represent? Mm -hmm. Close. Melissa said it. Melissa mentioned it yesterday. It's a weird, funny word. Schwa. schwa. Good job, schwa. Caleb. It's a schwa. Um, this sound is present in a lot of languages, but it has to be different than an uh. And right now, we're doing a couple of the sounds that should be a schwa as a straight up uh. Per. No. Per. Make it even less of an absolute vowel. Notre Père. Anytime we have that E at the end of a word in French, in spoken French, you wouldn't even say it. In spoken French, they would just leave that sound off altogether. So in sung French, we have to add it for the syllable. Let's do that. 
really, it's just a soft, gentle sound. You have to cradle your sound for this piece to make it what it needs to be. We are doing a very nice job of staying in key. Voice consonant. <coughs> Right there. Regna. Regna. And also Couton. We can make that a little bit more nasal. Couton. Sorry, right there. You remember your notes? Of course you do. Back to the beginning, put it all together. sounds happening. Do you see what it feels like? It makes the piece different when you make it personal, doesn't it? 